All right, guys, now we're going to take a look at the second part of the U.S. government, the executive branch. Now, this is headed by the president, who must be 35 years or older, a natural-born citizen, meaning born in the United States or its territories, or, according to recent interpretation, born to two uh, U.S. citizens. They have to have been living in the U.S. the previous 14 years. They serve a four-year term, and they can only be elected twice and cannot serve more than 10 years total. Now, the vice president has to meet the same requirements as the president, and he becomes president if the president is no longer able to serve. He also serves as the president of the Senate and votes in case of a tie in that particular legislative body. Now, there's also a group of advisors that are selected by the president to oversee various departments under the executive branch, and this is often referred to as his cabinet of advisors. Now, initially, this started off very small with only four of them, the state, the secretary, Secretary of State, the Secretary of the Treasury, Secretary of War, which is now Secretary of Defense, and the Attorney General, who's head of the Justice Department. And since then, there have been 11 more added. The Interior Department, Agriculture, Commerce, uh, Education, in, uh, Interior, Veterans Affairs, and a few others, obviously, that you see the list here. Don't feel like you need to write them all down. Just understand that this is the big group of advisors that help the President out in overseeing these departments. Now, if you notice here, the president doesn't have a whole lot of powers in comparison to Congress. He can propose laws, veto bills, grant pardons to federal criminals. He's the commander-in-chief of the military. He negotiates our treaties, and he appoints federal judges, ambassadors, and cabinet secretaries. But all those have to be approved by Congress, so you can see the checks and balances system in place here with the various powers. But the president's elected a little bit differently. The people vote for a group of electors who promise to vote for that particular candidate. There's a set for each particular party in the state. The electors from all the states make up what's called the Electoral College. Those electors vote for the candidate that they promise to based on the majority vote of the people in the state. If a candidate gets the majority of a state's popular vote, all of the electoral votes go to them, with a few exceptions like Nebraska, which can split electoral votes according to their state constitution. The candidate that gets a majority of the electoral votes, meaning 50% plus one, becomes president of the United States. Now that number is 270 electoral votes. That's what's necessary in order to become president. Of the United States. And a separate votes are cast for the Vice President. Thanks guys for paying attention. Hopefully we took good notes.